Hi, I'm John DeArmo with the Cokea Valley Star Group, and uh, today's video is going to be another in our sort of uh, extra material section. Um, obviously, until the sort of social distancing lockdown from COVID-19 goes away, um, Eddie and I can't get together to produce more of the Nito Seho or the Kodachi Seho after that, so we're gonna we're just gonna be doing our thing. Um, if you guys have uh, suggestions, uh, videos, topics that you'd like discussed, um, go ahead and leave them down in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Um, the focus of today's video is going to be on uh, combat psychology and how uh, Koryu uniquely handles it. So, when you are trying to uh, get a human being to go against their fundamental nature and uh, commit violence against somebody that they don't know. It can be uh, difficult. Um, you can find out more about this sort of thing by looking into uh, the field reports from, say, Vietnam, uh, shots fired versus uh, enemy combatants hit, and uh, kind of numerous pieces of research that show uh, soldiers typically intentionally miss their targets. Um, or they, they, they fire in a way that's suboptimal with the hope that they'll miss. Um, and interpersonal conflict with edge weapons is really no different. Um, except that without the distance there to to keep a person safe, what their uh, sort of hesitancy tends to come off as is um, stalling, is retreating, is uh, things that when put outside of that context and asked, they could, you know, they could clearly articulate that it isn't an intelligent idea to uh, step away when the person has the initiative and has the weapon and you don't have a, a means of reasonable egress. Um, so, we have to figure out, or rather, uh, anybody who develops any kind of martial system that's meant to actually be used on people, we have to think about how we get people to overcome their better nature. In other words, their desire to not do harm to others. And what's uh, equally important is we have to figure out how to equip them with the means to be able to deal with the fact that they committed violence after the fact. Um, you can look at the suicide rates of our uh, returning veterans, and it's, it's pretty clear that there is a major problem when it comes to the education of our current troops in terms of how to handle um, not just the combative stress, but the sort of pre-combative stress. The, okay, you know, you, you've, you've spent your time, you, you've done your training, you've done your job training, you've shipped overseas, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and yeah, maybe they shoot, maybe they mortar, whatever, but you still gotta wait, right? And that's, uh, it, it takes its own kind of toll. So, how does Cordy handle it? Well, uh, in a very interesting way, actually. So, uh, mystical thinking, occult thinking, is uh, always been a prevalent aspect of Japanese culture, um, both in the uh, native religions of the Ainu uh, that evolved into what we now know as, as Shintoism and its various... Well, it's, its various uh, forms. Um, not that it's... That's a digression, we're not going to go there. <laughs> um, but also in the... Uh, a lot of the early Buddhist sects that were imported, um, there's a, a strong, a strong sort of mystical tradition. And while it's easy for people to kind of, uh, kind of hand wave this away, like, oh, you know, that's 
just primitive thinking, you know, they're, they're calling on the gods to, to do whatever, and, you know, they may as well just go read their horoscope out of a, you know, Sunday newspaper and be the same. But, um, it is not what it may at first uh, appear to be. So, uh, in Yoho, I'll, I'll talk mostly about that since uh, that's what I know. <laughs> We do not have a kind of uh, a directly obvious occult <laughs> tradition. Um, in fact, it could be said that we have no occult tradition, um, but that would not be exactly accurate. Other styles, uh, especially those uh, connected with uh, either uh, Shinto shrines or, or Buddhist temples, often have uh, very specific occult rituals that they go through, like the uh, Kujikiri of Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu, um, as an example. Um, so it's a uh, hand muja ninja action. Um, that's actually has nothing to do with ninja. <laughs> um, so yeah, in Yoho we don't seem to have any of that. Um, but we kind of do, right? So, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with sort of Japanese occult systems, the let's stick with mudra. Mudra are basically uh, hand uh, positions that are meant to uh, be evocative. They're they're designed as a uh, kind of a touchstone to help bring a practitioner practitioner into a certain mindset. Um, so, if um, I'm going to make something up, let's say we're using like sword and shield, which is a, a legitimate uh, mudra, but let's say in our style we we use this while focusing on delivering an effortless cut, right? Maybe uh, cutting through the difficulties in our life or, or whatever, right? Whatever window dressing you want. What we're doing is we're building in a schema, a way of thinking, a way of getting our brain to operate um, that is different than normal. It's it's just like when you go into a shrine, you pass through the uh, the, tori, uh, the big gate, right? And you're stepping from from the normal world into the, the sort of uh, super world, right? It's the, the world beyond or the world within, or just the other world. And these sort of uh, mudra are the same way. They're just something there to get your mind into this space. Now, in Yoho, we don't, we don't have mudra, right? Obviously, um, because Musashi was pretty pretty clear in his opinions of uh, relying on that kind of uh, esotericism as uh, a direct means for conflict, but we still get the same job done. We just go about it differently. So, where uh, maybe some uh, maybe some Buddhist sect gets a they do a specific ritual or mudra to get in their mindset to do whatever. What we use to get into that place to where we can get the work done is our kamai. Our kamai are our mudra, basically. And that's why uh, doing your kamai well, uh, doing your kamai, of course, doing your kamai in a good, solid, technical way is important because they are pragmatic tools. They're, they're not there for show. They're not there to, to project an image, necessarily. They're there to, to do a specific kind of work to employ a specific kind of strategy with ease. Um, but there are other aspects to Kamai. Um, so when we're when we're we're in Chudon, right? And we, we tighten that diaphragm and we tighten our thighs, we tuck our tail and drop our shoulders, and we get that lean in and drive and we just mm, right. We're putting our body into a position that we don't would, would otherwise not get into. And then, uh, through, the tan through the tension, uh, both the internal tension that we're creating, 
as we constrict our airway and the tension that our partner is creating uh, with their semi, with their intent to uh, really wallop us, we are, are uh, basically engraving into our mind that this position means this kind of interaction, right? From there, our technical work evolves, right? We, we whatever, ukinagashi or, or doing our ujigamai or whatever is inconsequential, we are building in the on switch, right? It's like, oh, it's time to go to work, bump, and we're there, right? Then, do -do 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 -do, we've done our work in our kamayo toku, chicken step, and we back out, and we drop that tension. We, we drop it from our diaphragm, we drop it from our thighs, and it all goes away. And now we're back in uh, sort of the normal state where, oh, and it's just every day again. This allows us to, uh, one, get into, with proper training, and proper training I mean uh, intentful training uh, to prepare you for violence, it lets you get into a state where you can go, okay, it's work time, I'm working, without that kind of hesitancy, um, or uh, unnecessarily crippling fear, right? Because uh, you feel fear, right? Fear is just uh, normal. It's like feeling sorry for yourself, you know, having a hard time training, things aren't working out well for you. It's just like, oh, poor me, that's normal, right? It's like, it's easy to look at people who seem to be very successful and go, oh, this person just doesn't have these bad feelings, but life is harder for me because I have these bad feelings. Um, and that's just another layer of feeling sorry for yourself, right? Everybody has problems, and you work through it. But a little bit of a digression. So, we use our Kamai as our Muja to set up our mind, to put it in the space to do the work, right? This is why it's uh, so important that when you're practicing, especially when you're on your own, and you don't have your partner there, you don't have a, a teacher there to, to help you and keep you honest, that you don't practice in a lackadaisical kind of way. In other words, uh, you don't just, oh, just go pick up the sword, swing it for a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm doing an arm workout. It's great. I go home. I'm talking on the phone. I got whatever, right? That kind of training, even if you train your body, you're not training the thing that really matters the most, right? Uh, right? Because if you have a... If you prepared your heart and mind uh, to be able to do what's necessary when it's necessary, then not having technical skills is just an inconvenience, right? But having technical skills, but not having prepared your heart and mind for violence uh, means that you're not going to be able to apply them. This is the real reason that most of these uh, kind of McDojo guys uh, lose in fights. It's not because they're not practicing something that's good, I mean, that can go along with it, but honestly, if you're a 180 pound human being and you hit somebody in the face, they better feel it, right? Like, like even just, you're still gonna really do some damage, unless, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, uh, you're not prepared to commit to just boom and get it done, right? So, uh, it's, it's an important topic, um, but because it is, because it almost has the flavor of the sort of like, woo woo, mystical thinking, right? It can be off-putting, and it can also be really hard to uh, pin down precisely when you're not with another person that can demonstrate it to you and just be like, no, you know, this is what you're doing, this is what I'm doing, right? You know, and it's not just about, oh, I just push forward, because a lot of people will attack somebody when they're scared, right? It's uh, fight or flight or several other Fs. Um, so it's not a matter of just going forward. 
it's a deeper thing. It is that 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 soul focus. The you're not trying to mentally escape from it. You're not trying to push it away. You're not trying to run from it. You're not trying to do any of these things. You are there. You acknowledge the problem, and you work to resolve it directly. Right? No, no piddling around. Just get it done. Right? Now sometimes the way to get it done is to effectively make your escape, right? Hopefully <laughs> that is your best option because, you know, that's what we'd all prefer. Um, so, uh, here again, you end up with a thing where two people can run away. One person did it correctly. One person did it wrong, right? Wrong. <laughs> did it in a way that was not within their control, not within the scope of them being able to make rational choices, um, effective choices, right? So, we know that uh, our Kamai is our Muja, right? But uh, it isn't just about uh, being able to flip your switch, do the work, flip the switch off, and be detached from it and go, oh, you know, yeah, I worked because I had to. It's an important part of it. There's also a whole nother layer to the kind of esoteric thinking common in Koryu that has to do with um, a ruthlessly uh, challenging yourself. Um, I don't just mean on a, in a in a technical way. I mean, the technical way is how we, we first begin to really interact with this concept, right? Be like, okay, well, I, I, I did saw sin, but I can feel I'm on my heels, right? Maybe I don't think that the sensei sees that I do. They probably do, or maybe they don't, right? Maybe you're not important. You're just in the back row, right? doesn't matter. But you know it's wrong, right? Or maybe, you know, you do something and you're like, hmm, Mm, I don't know what I did wrong, but it doesn't feel right, right? Because once you feel, once you have a technical experience where you feel like, oh, that's what it is, that is this thing, right? It stays with you, and it becomes the metric for everything else you do, because it's like the truth. It is either the truth, or it's not. It, it can't be like 99.9% .9 the truth, and still be the truth. It either is or it isn't. Your work is either correct or it isn't. There's there's no like, oh, it was close enough, right? I mean, you can say sort of removed from the situation, oh, well, his cut dropped the dude, so it was good enough. But that, um, especially in an age where we are not expected to use the skills that we're learning to commit violence against other people, that level of just like hand waving is not acceptable. It is it is simply not acceptable. Uh, if <laughs> as a caveat, if you're really trying to go deep with this work, if you just want to play dress up, then that's fine. More power to you. Um, but if what your goal is is to really understand what Musashi was trying to pass down in the spirit and the context that goes with that, you have to be uh, equally demanding of yourself, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of unpopular in our current age, but you know, you have to hold yourself to an impossible standard, right? Because no matter what you do, there's always going to be like, could have done that better, could have done that better. But that's not what this is. It's, do you have it or do you not, right? And this is where it gets murky, right? It's, it's hard, <laughs> especially not being able to put your hands on a person and go, no, like this, bump, so that they can feel, 
so that you can have that direct transmission of, of um, what it is that we're talking about. Because it sounds like several things, but it's not those things. And if you go off on a tangent where you think that, oh, my foot is exactly here. Oh, my spacing is exactly here. Oh, my timing is exactly here. Like, huh, and this is what it means. No, those things are good. Those things are good and you should practice them, right? Because the more you can refine your control over your body, the more you can put yourself where you want, when you want, but the easier your, your work is gonna be, obviously. Um, if you're sloppy, your work's gonna be rough for you. Doesn't mean you can't do it, right? Um, but pursuing that alone won't get you over here. Won't get you to the thing that we're driving at. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if speaking any more about this is going to uh, bring clarity or just muddy the waters more. <laughs> um, the point. When you practice your work, especially in this time when we're practicing solo, um, keep your mind to the game, right? Techie's not there to help you out, right? So you have to do his job too. You have to put the fear of God in you. You have to drive at your mind as ruthlessly as you want your training partner too, right? And if you're the kind of person that's like, oh, Bob, I'm not feeling it today. Swing a little softer, swing a little softer. Then this section of the work is not for you, right? But um, for everybody else, right? Chase yourself, try yourself. Uh, just, you know, really, really push your mind. see what rolls out, right? But, remember, Kamayo Toku, right? You're in position, you're focused, you're pushing, you're doing all this work, it's just burn, 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 you get it, right? And then, you relax, and you drop it. And once again, you're, you're Bob the Plumber, you're, you're Fred the Carpenter, you're just a normal, everyday person, right? Because if you neglect Kamayotoku, if you neglect releasing your attitude, then you're just going to become fanatical. And that, it's, it's out of balance. It's unhealthy, and it will not make you a better fighter. It will not bring you closer to what Musashi is describing. It does not make you cooler. You know, to be Captain Edge Lord. I know uh, me. Uh, I'm always aware, fully aware. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna... You're a human being. You have to embrace that, right? Because if you don't, <laughs> you're you're just lying to yourself. And if you can lie to yourself, then your enemy can lie to you, and they can just take you, right? So, as always. If you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.